What's up, everybody? It's your boy Chris Rush again, coming at you at the AHA conference in Portland, Oregon. It's the last day, and I'm super excited. And I got a new friend that I want to introduce you to, Clayton Strand. And um, he's got a heart about uh, ending abortion. And even he, yesterday, he shared his heart about um, ending abortion regarding the political side. So I just wanted you to meet him. How you doing, my man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited to be here and start meeting. Um, putting faces um, with all the names on Facebook. Amen. So, and then we're about to do some agitation today, man. You excited about that? I am always excited um, and nervous about agitation. Yeah. Because um, it sucks, um, but it's necessary. It's necessary. Can you just explain to the world out there why, you know, a lot of people have bad <clears throat> taste in their mouth when they think about the political side sure. of abortion. Um, most people feel like politicians use that to to just kind of get the Christian vote or whatever what how how do you how, how do you see that just go ahead I see that as absolutely true so mm -hmm. when when we talk about politics people uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's worldly and we can't do that because politicians use us mm -hmm. and politicians buy our votes and that's true there's there's no way to get around that mm -hmm. um, what we need to do is redeem politics and and put ourselves in the political process um, God institutes authority um, God instituted the authority that we have, and, and in the United States, our authority is, comes from the Constitution, which gives us this really awesome process, when it works, which is not very often anymore, to affect political change. Mm -hmm. But political change doesn't start. Political change doesn't, doesn't, isn't the final and arbiter right, right, of right. everything. It's a tool to use. There it is. So, so we see... Uh, political overtones throughout the, throughout the scriptures. We see the Old Testament prophets going to kings yeah. and saying, repent, you need to change this, you need to do this. Um, and it's very political. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's holy at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, they're not trying to buy off the king. Mm -hmm. They're calling the king to repent. repent. Come on. And you have John the baptizer telling Herod, sleeping with your brother's wife is sin, mm -hmm. marrying her is sin, you need to repent. Come it's on. a sin issue, and it's a political issue. Mm -hmm. and, and you're addressing sin that has improperly been co-opted by po uh, political speech, if, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So politics is, is just the tool. Um, and historically, you see the hearts of the people have to change before you get legislative action. Okay. So we need the the legislative side of things. We have to change the culture first. Mm -hmm. If enough of the culture says abortion is a terrible, horrible thing, these babies are creating the image and likeness of God, and ripping them apart is sin, and it offends our Creator, and it offends us because it offends our Creator. Mm -hmm then you'll see really good, solid political action. You'll have mm -hmm. the politicians, even if they're not disposed to abolition, will have no choice because they want to keep their jobs. Right, right. So you will end up eventually, whether that's in five years or 150 years, mm -hmm. is irrelevant. The end game in America under the system that we have now is going to have to be political. Right. The hearts change, the legislation follows. Right. And we see that with the civil rights movement. Um, you didn't get a real, you didn't get the Civil Rights Act mm -hmm. first. Right. You got images of our black neighbors, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives being persecuted in the streets. And you saw men of God rise up and say, enough. Mm -hmm. And then and once then, enough yeah. mm -hmm. people were outraged, you saw legislative action. Right. They call it um, imperfect legislative action. Right. Um, but but legislative action none this, uh, all the same. Right. I like to say I like to say like our political leaders aren't necessary even leaders. They're just echoing what the people want. So when we demand, and that's why we believe that, um, and what I, why I'm an abolitionist is no compromise. When we we demand that this thing must be done and over with, then they'll have to change it because the voice of the people has spoken. We've been blessed, yeah, right. I, and, and you can cut me off if I'm wrong, we've been blessed with a nation that we can actually influence the culture. And a lot of people will say, well, in the Bible days, Jesus didn't talk about politics, or Jesus didn't, and, and, I, and I, you, I don't know yeah, if you want the, to say the anything the people that. in that time, you know, um, uh, especially the, you know, you have in Israel, 
while Jesus was walking the earth. You have mm -hmm. the Romans, who are citizens, and and you have the um, the Jews, who by and large are not. They have no political power. So if Jesus were to say, oh, we need the Senate, the Roman Senate, to do this thing, and we need Caesar to do this thing, he has no power. He has no political power. Mm -hmm. And in the United States of America, by and large, still, mm -hmm. flawed as it is, we have political power. And we should use it. And, and God, we should and use God, it, and we should right. use it godly, in yeah. a godly way. Yeah. And when we vote and when we're writing legislation, our filter should always be the repository of all liberty, which is God's revealed word to us, the Bible. Um, so there's a way to do it, and there's a way to do it in a godly way, and there's a way to do it that honors God. So don't and, throw away politics, but do it in a godly way. And, and don't count on it. Spirit. Don't count on it as the Savior. Count on, count on God. Right. And use politics. Come on. I like that, dude. That's fire. So that, that's what I would say, and that's, um, I mean, if you let me go, I'll go for another two hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, appreciate, appreciate you, my man. I appreciate meeting you and, and having the opportunity to talk with you. Amen.